What's wrong with television these days? If you, you were in the lead in, in the golden age, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was thinking ahead uh, of, uh, of television. And if it isn't the lead in age now, it's some even baser metal. Yeah. It seems to me that there's almost nothing humorous about the alleged humor on television. Well, for the and you watch people watching it, and they sit there, and they just stare, and the laugh track laughs, and they continue to stare, and then they turn it off, and they say, do you like it? And they said, oh, yeah, it was funny. <laughs> I wonder if they think it's funny. I don't think they have any choice. They watch what the network puts on. Um, I wonder, because th that's something one always talks about, uh, are the good old days better than these days? Because I'm sure in the mm -hmm. days of the, of the golden era of television, there was as much garbage on. Uh, sure. But I, I, the has. only explanation I have is that it was a smaller audience. And whenever you work for a smaller audience, you are you can afford to be more sophisticated. You don't have to worry about satisfying the needs of a hundred million people. Well, uh, then by small, you all must imply also better quality somehow. Yes, Are I they, think... Were they richer people who could afford TV sets? Probably. I think they were more sophisticated. You were dealing mostly with urban areas. They're only in the big cities did they have yeah. television. We're talking back uh, in the early 50s now. So I think, uh, consequently... Well, for example, uh, when we did the show of shows, uh, in those days, we were doing satires of Japanese films. Now, you know... And Ingmar that Bergman in films. When I, I laughed at the satire exactly. without ever having seen yeah. the Bergman films. Now, you know that only in the major cities of America were they seeing these films. Really getting it. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we were aimed at that audience. And I guess we were very much like uh, Saturday Night Live. That's funny. I don't see any similarity, but I know what you mean. That's that what I meant. That I want to get along with you, Dick. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> well, I want you to like me, so I don't I, I'm what, beginning you know, to see, see a similarity what, now. Yes, I yes. do see what you mean, do you? and yet I see what I mean, because they make me laugh occasionally. Yeah. Uh, I mean, about half the show is terrible, and half the show is absolutely wonderful. But, but what's I, fun about it, though, is that the, the, uh, sometimes the outrageously sophomoric sketch that yeah. they will go do right through, right to the end, without any uh, apologies yes, I say, or anything. soon they'll get to uh, something funny, and they don't. Uh -huh. But when Belushi, <laughs> when Belushi does the, uh, the samurai, I mean, I just love it. Yeah, yeah. It's fun to do that show. I hosted it a couple oh, times. Oh, did you? Yeah. And it's the only place left, I suppose, or at the moment, where you can get a taste of what it must have been like for Milton Berle and the people who did a live show all yeah. the way through, the fun of running yeah. to change costumes, and a guy's getting ready to cue you and you don't have mm -hmm. your mustache on and so on. It's wonderful fun well, to do. I, do I recommend it. I think you should host it some night. They did ask me once. You were scared. <laughs> yes, panicked. <laughs> panicked. <laughs> but wouldn't you agree that the general level of television r writing is written rotten? Yes, it is. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's really wrote bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, by wrote. It sure is. I don't watch enough of it to, uh, not if there's a football game or a movie on. You know, Fred Allen it? predicted, and Groucho concurred, that the uh, laugh track would kill comedy because there was no necessity for the writers to be funny anymore. They always knew there would be a laugh supplied. And as Fred Allen pointed out, in many true. cases, the pre-recorded audiences that were laughing were dead uh, <laughs> before the jokes were. Uh, well, that's true. I mean, so you had dead people laughing at dead material. <laughs> That's why the theater is so hard and, and movies are so hard, because you do not have that, and consequently it makes the quality uh, better, I think. Are there any Neil Simon destroyed manuscripts, anything you've committed to the flames after reading it? They're in the drawer, in an asbestos drawer. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't want them destroyed yet, but... Um, I, I start many plays that I give up on. And I Didn't just you write a whole up. movie for Burt Reynolds and Marsha? Yes, but I'm going to do that. I mean, Miss Mason? Yes, I'm going to do that. It just seemed wrong. Uh, Burt seemed uh, not right for it, or my material seemed not right for Burt. And uh, it was not what I wanted to do at that time. I have to get into the mood of a particular piece. In other words, I have to say, I want to do a love story now or I, I really want to dig into my own personal background and, and do something like Chapter 2. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to do the film of Chapter 2 next. Consequently, after that, I think I would want to do something a lot lighter, so we will probably do this picture that you mentioned, which ah. I wish you didn't mention in that way. What have you got against the Star Spangled Girl? You said somewhere you'd like to bury it if you could. Well. Walter Kerr said, uh, Neil Simon didn't have an idea for a play this year, but he wrote it anyway. 
and <laughs> it was ahead. true. It was, it, it was my eagerness to write a play rather than having a play that I was eager to write. Um, it, it was a, a good idea, basically, but I made the major flaw, major mistake of writing about a place that I had never been to, San Francisco, up until at, at that time. I had never been to San Francisco, yet I set the play there. Um, writing about a girl I had never met, and had I met her, I would have hated her. So, so you had two things. Yeah, uh, those, th those two things are enough to, uh, to make you hate the play. What kind of paper do you type on? Yellow. Really? Uh, yes. So do I. Yes? <laughs> I had a feeling we had a kinship there. I love that. That yellow is kind of slick, not the cheap, flimsy kind. Oh, no, not but the, the heavy, slightly heavy stuff, slick. yes, for posterity. Yeah. The white seems like it's too, um, it's like doing a crossword puzzle with a pen. I mean, that's permanent. It's too fine. I'm not ready it? for the white right. paper yet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the people who invested in Corassable Bond years ago are millionaires, thanks to you. You yes. must have depleted several forests by this time. Well, no, not just quite. with your rejects. Just, I don't work with carbons, see. So that's half the paper I don't usually use, which is really living dangerously because I only have one copy. You could leave it in a cab. Yes, there is a cab driver now who's got a play opening in the spring. <laughs> <laughs> I think I had him today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it sounds awful. He tried out some of the lines on me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, that just jammed what I wanted to <laughs> ask you. Do you re realize how great? the writing was on radio when we were kids. Now, that's something that does stand up under the test of time. Occasionally, a radio buff will send me a tape of an old Fibber McGee and Molly show, or Bergen, and there's really witty, wonderful dialogue in there that... You, yeah, what's true. the last time anyone quoted a funny line from a primetime television show? The characters may be funny, or you like Linda Lavin, or the lady mm -hmm. who plays the, the other way, or whatever, but, you know, but, but hardly ever does anyone say, did you hear that wonderful line last night when uh, Field said Bergen has the profile of an avocado yeah, or yeah. something, you know, some really out of... Well, you're talking about wit now, and uh, most of the television comedy is geared to, uh, to visual and uh, slapstick, a lot of it, and mm -hmm. it's hard to quote slapstick. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. That's right. <laughs> yes, it is. Marceau could do it. <laughs> yes. Go back to, to an earlier reference. What, what, in the minute remaining, what, what is, in the nine seconds remaining? <laughs> what kind of anxiety do you have, Neil? Well, I tell you, I hate talking fast when people ask me very quick questions. Well, I think it's awful. I wish you could yes, get back I'll to the I'll try possible. to do that. Yes, I'll do it as soon as I can. Okay, thank you. Very nice. Good night. Thank you.